Italy have beaten Turkey by three goals to nil. Uh, I find it hard to believe, but it is their biggest ever win at the European Championships, Richie, and people will be very much taking notice of the Italians after that. Absolutely. It was a very one-sided second half. Um, some really standout individual performances by Italy, but the perfect opener for them. The goalkeeper was comfortable defensively. They looked very solid. They had the majority of the ball in midfield. Two of their three strikers scored. Berardi, I thought, was excellent. Spinazzola, likewise. And it was as emphatic an opening night victory as they could have hoped for. Turkey, exact opposite. We'll talk about them in a moment, mm -hmm. but perfect start for Italy. L Liam, did you expect... Italy to play as well as that for the victory and the performance to be as emphatic? Well, you don't, you don't win your 10 games in qualifying and go 27 unbeaten if you're not doing something really, really right. And uh, they look so professional, so efficient, play for one another, uh, good mix of experience and youth. Like there was players that came in today, I didn't know too much about Spinazzola, the right-footed left-back, he was absolutely terrific. Uh, Locatelli, big lad in midfield. Him and Jorginho and Barella look to have a great balance in midfield. Uh, where I thought they might be weak was the three lads up front. They looked like they were struggling to break down the, uh, the Turkish defence in the first half, but they, they came good in the second half, and I was really impressed. Yeah, very good. OK, let's have a look at... There's a lot to go through, we, the three goals, obviously, and, and we'll start, Richie, with the own goal uh, from Demiral. This will have hurt him playing against Italy. Yeah, there was element of fortune with this. Obviously, it's an OG, and, and, and Mirash there slips in the build-up, but Italy completely deserved this. Um, they, they, were, they were on top, the ball from Locatelli initially, and then um, the, was Mirash, was he flat-footed? Was he losing his balance? Was he too slow to react, or did he just slip? Either way capitalised on it and unfortunate that it went in off the defender but at that point Turkey could have had no complaints that they were a goal down they offered nothing, they brought nothing to the game they had no ambition, no attacking threat at all they looked like a team that was a matter of time they were just going to hang on for the second half, it was a matter of time before they conceded That's the, the I suppose the, the tough thing for them, now this is a heavy defeat morale will be low but you know, we, we spoke about how they kind of breezed their way into the tournament and were winning rave reviews, but it just, they just sat there and defended. So I, I don't know, maybe you could say the occasion got to them, opening night, mm. global audience playing in Rome against Italy, one of the hosts, but maybe it's a feature of the format of the tournament. Only eight teams are going to be lost in the group stages, so many teams will go into this pretty cagey, pretty conservative, thinking four points, probably maybe even three points will be enough they're not going to take chances. Mm. So if teams do come up against stronger nations, hopefully we won't, but maybe the group stage will be littered with really defensive, one-dimensional performances. But hopefully not. I hope not. No. <laughs> really? Well, that was awful from Turkey. No ambition was, at yeah. all. Because yeah. we, we, we spoke beforehand about the attacking players they have up front. We've nothing to say about them. Yeah, well, we have something to say about one of them in a little while. We'll get to that. Um, Immobile, um, Liam, you know, you, this guy, you know, Italian fans want him to really step up at this tournament. Did you see uh, enough of that from him tonight? Yeah, I thought particularly second half, you know, he took his goal really, mm -hmm. really well, Dara. Uh, first half, he had a couple of half chances, but this was a proper chance and he didn't, he didn't let it pass him. You know, this, this is Barella in the midfield, great little ball into Locatelli, uh, and then they're out and... Uh, Insignia, this is how efficient they were with their passing. Again, back to Barella. Barella was involved in all three goals. I was really impressed with him. This is Berardi. Good ball. This is Spinazzola coming. He's the, the right-footed left-back, as I talked to you about. And as it comes off the goalkeeper, you wouldn't want it to fall to anybody else but Immobile because he's cool, calm, and uh, he just takes it like a real top striker would. Side, side foots it in. Uh, in a tight situation, I was really impressed with that goal. And that'll do him the world of good. You know, he's off and running. That's yeah. what strikers need a goal under the belt. Mm. And then Insigne, uh, another a potentially very big player, uh, small in stature, but a, a big player, big heart, and big skill. Yeah, again, the, the, the goalkeeper's distribution, Jack here all night, wasn't great, and that, and that, that was a really poor piece of play. But after this, it was really good play, one and two touch. Football from, from, from four Italians there, but what the goalkeeper was seeing there is beyond me. But the finish, Insigne, it was, he tried one of these in the first half, didn't quite get it right, but goalkeeper had no chance there. I thought that was a class goal. Yeah. Mm. You know, they were so efficient and professional. At 2-0 up, 
It might have been that uh, Berardi got the ball and wanted to show what he could do, you know, but no, it was really professional. As Richie said, two touch into Barella, two touch into uh, Immobile, two touch Insignia, and it was trademark finish, wasn't it? He tried that in the first half. He got a, it got blocked, but he tooked it away beautifully. So, uh, a really, a really very uh, impressive performance by the home team. Yeah, for sure it was. And I suppose um, you can only imagine the, the sort of uh, inquiry that will go into this in Turkey. But this moment with Yilmaz, like again, we had, you know, the guy had a great season. We had high hopes for him. Yeah, we spoke a lot about him. This is the only thing I'll remember from his performances tonight. Was just how kind of annoyed I was seeing him doing that. It was just a clear, blatant dive, an attempt to cheat the referee. Chiellini, you'll see in a moment, just kind of laughs at him picking him up. I, I, I don't know why players feel the need to do this in an era where there is VAR. On the off chance you'll hoodwink the referee, he's going to get support by his colleagues in the VAR offices and, you, and you'll get found out. So it was a really poor bit of play from him. I know we can get hardened to this. You can get, say, well, this is part of football now. Players do it all the time. We're used to seeing this for years. But I still think you should call it out when people make complete prats of themselves. But uh, there was, it just looked so ridiculous. It, it did. And, and to compound it, it was, it was part of a performance where, as an attacking threat, Yilmaz was, was, was really... It showed yeah. nothing. Reliant on supply, obviously, which wasn't there either, but mm. poor moment from him. He was right up the street of Collini and Benucci, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. He, he wasn't particularly pacey. He was tall, he was strong, but they just yeah. they just kept him quiet all night. Yeah, well, you can imagine, we were talking off air, you can imagine um, the two boys, all the experience they have, reading about this fella's big reputation, the season he had, and, and they... They kept him and Turkey to a clean sheet. Well, yeah, what summed it up was the, was the clip at the end. Uh, Let's look at this. Yeah, this uh, is... is... This is... This is... Uh, epitomises the Italian mentality, you know. Yilmaz is in with a chance there. Killing straight over to him. Uh, <coughs> the goalkeeper is thrilled with him. The rest of the defence are... You know, they must look up to this guy and think, well, he's our captain, mm. you know, he's going to lead us to... Uh, Deep into the tournament. Deep into the tournament. And they have that nice mix, you know, of, of the, the younger players, like you talk about Barella, and then obviously the more senior guys, let's, let's call them that. that. That seems to work very well. Like Donnarumma is, is not exactly old in goal as well either. He had to wait so long for Buffon to get out as well. No, he made his debut in. for Italy at 17. Yeah. He's only 21, you know. Amazing. He looks terrific goalkeeper, although he didn't have too much to do tonight, but he's got presence. He distributes the ball, and unlike the Turkish goalkeeper, Shakar, who was poor. Mm. Uh, no, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to say they're going to go all the way to win, because I do think that up front they might be lacking okay. the, the class of the top player, but they're certainly going to go deep into the tournament. Would you put, like as, you know, we, we spoke beforehand about the, you know, half a dozen potential winners, they're, they're very firmly in that group of six, aren't they? Or yeah, more? yeah, and yeah. it suits them not to be favourites. I think people will, uh, people haven't said they're at the, 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 the ability of someone like uh, Belgium or France, but the Italians are like that situation mm. they're in. Yeah, very good. What does this do for yeah, Wales, Switzerland is tomorrow? Um, OK, goal difference, Turkey are in bother now. I think that's the key thing. Okay. I mean, you can lose your opening night game and you have two games to recover it, but if you're in a group where you think maybe three or four points might be the target, if you've opened up with a minus three goal difference, you're going to compare probably less favourably to any teams in other groups to finish on three or four points. Mm. So... Turkey now are under a good bit of pressure. Because after tomorrow, it's Turkey, Wales, and then Italy, Switzerland. So yeah, We've seen those teams in the past start really badly and then make a recovery, okay. you know? So yeah. It's just going to be fascinating to see. But Wales looking at that, they'll be saying, come on, if we can get off to at least a draw tomorrow or a win, yeah. we've got a great chance of qualifying. Yeah, very good. I think that's in Baku tomorrow at uh, 2 o'clock. You can see it here. But that is where we have to leave you on day one of Euro 2020, a year later than expected, of course, but it's finally underway.